If you're having trouble with code, you might want to use some debugging tools. So in this short video, I'm just going to walk through two techniques for debugging. Here's an example I'll be using. And there's some notes on using the interactive debugger in Eclipse available on the course homepage. So if you scroll down, you'll see notes about Eclipse and one of them should be a debugging tutorial. So if you click there, you'll see some text about how to use the debugger and some advice. But I'm just going to walk through this example. Um, and let's look at this code, what it's supposed to do. So I've written a function here called div3 minus div5. And the idea here is that I want to go through an array. I want to find how many things are divisible by 3. I want to find how many things are divisible by 5. And I want to return their difference. So I've thought about this a little bit ahead of time and I wrote out the code. This is my first hack at it. So I'm going to use two variables to keep track of the number of things divisible by 3 and the number of things divisible by 5. We'll call those div3, div5. Then I'm going to inductively go through the array. And at each point, um, I'm going to look to see if the number is divisible by 3. And if it is, I'll increment div3. And I'll look to see if it's divisible by 5. And if it is, I'll increment div5. And then I'll return the difference. So that's the idea. And then I've written some tests here. So my main test, um, my main program is going to look first at um, this array. It's got two things divisible by three, so the answer should be two. There's two things. Um, here I've got uh, two things that are divisible by five, so the answer should be negative two. Um, and here I've got you know, a couple things divisible by uh, three and a couple things divisible by five, so I'm expecting zero actually, right? So um, here I've got one thing divisible by three, one thing divisible by five, and here's something divisible by both three and five. So anyway, I, this is not an exhaustive suite of tests, but it's sufficient for me to, to show you um, the debugger. So if I run this thing, what happens? Well, I get the output shown over here, and you can see it's already sort of wrong. And so let's just walk through how one can do some debugging. The first thing to do is just look at the error message, messages you've got and see if you can just rationally figure out what's going on. So in this case, you can see I have this test where um, the argument is two things divisible by five and I'm supposed to get negative two. And that makes sense because the number of things divisible by three here is zero. The number of things divisible by five is two. So I'm expecting negative two. But I'm actually getting a positive number. Um, well, how could that be? And hmm, I'm not sure. Um, let's look at the next test. So here I'm expecting zero, but I'm getting four. Um, and this is where I had two things divisible by um, three and two things divisible by five. So again, I'm like, what is up with that? That's weird. And oh, but if you think about these two things together, it must be that I'm getting the variables messed up. And in fact, oh, I see what happened. I did a copy and paste and I forgot to change this variable. Some of you probably even noticed this when I was reading the code to you. Um, I was saying one thing, but it said something else. But it's sometimes hard to see these things. You know, you, you just miss it. Um, so, okay, great. This should make my code work. Then I'll be happy. And I'm like, oh, what? So now I have this one problem, and I don't know what's going on. My code looks correct. Everything's fine. Why am I getting this problem? All right, so when you have a problem like this, you may not be able to figure it out just by inspection. This is just a matter of experience. You know, more experienced programmers obviously see more by inspection than less experienced programmers. But for you, this may be something where you're like, I don't know, what do I do? So um, in such a case, there's a couple of techniques. So if inspection is not working for you, you don't see the error, like I can't see it anywhere. Um, you can go through and um, print out the code. Let me actually revert the fix that I made. Let's suppose you didn't see this because it's po entirely possible you don't see this error. Um, you know, I, I happen to see it, but you may not. I mean, it's it's easy to miss this kind of thing. So 
what you can do is two kinds of debugging. First one is, is just to insert a bunch of print messages in. This is a pretty standard technique. And what you do is you simply call the function and you print out um, what's happening. So here um, I'm printing out each time I call the function what the argument was. And then I have a little uh, print statement each time in the loop to print out what is the value um, at the beginning of the loop. Uh, you, you can also do it at, at the end of the loop. So maybe it's more, more meaningful if I put these afterwards. So, um, and you can sort of see what you think is happening and, and, and what's working out. Okay, so um, now I can read the output here. So it says that for A with the array of two things divisible by three, you can see that div three is increasing. That's great. For the array with two things divisible by five, and you can see, oh, crap a rolly div three is still increasing and div five remains zero. Well, that's obviously the problem. So I need to change this to div five. Okay, so that solves sort of our um, easy problem. Um, what do we do about the harder one? Well, when you have a, a bunch of output like this, it can get difficult to see. I'm only failing this last test. Um, and so when I'm failing the last test, you might want to comment all this out and uh, run it. And you can see here for this one test, well, div three is going up, but div five is not. Well, why is that happening? Um, I don't get it. I mean, I have, I have div five should go up too. If it's divisible by five, increment div five. Well, what's happening? Um, so maybe you can figure it out here. Maybe you can't. Um, in any case, let me show you a separate technique for doing debugging. So print statements are great, but they actually take a fair amount of time to type in. So to type in meaningful print statements that you can actually read um, is, is a fair amount of work. I mean, you do get used to it after a while and you can, you can crank these out pretty fast. Um, but for, for little bugs, this is often overkill. And having all that stuff in your output can be difficult to read. So for this purpose, Eclipse has an interactive debugger, which is really very handy. Okay, so let me just show you um, that. Let's go back to our original program. We're failing one test. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just zero in on that test. So I'm gonna comment out the other things. And the way I'm doing this is to um, select toggle comment from the Eclipse menu. So um, I've just got my one test here that I care about. Um, I run it, see the test is failing. And what I'm gonna do now is to, um, instead of run the program, I'm going to debug the program. So right next to the run menu, I have this little uh, bug. So I am going to debug the program by pressing here. The first time you do this, you'll get a window up which says, would you like to change perspective to the debugging perspective and say yes. Um, you will always want to do that. So if there's a checkbox there to say always do this, um, then always do it. Because anytime you're debugging, you want to be in what's called a debug perspective. So let's see what that looks like. If I just hit the debug, nothing happens. I'm sad. Um, what I need to do in order to get it, the program to actually start debugging is to set what's called a breakpoint. So what I want to do is go to the place in the code that I'm interested in, and under the run menu, select a toggle breakpoint. And you can see there's a command for that. And that'll put a little blue dot here. Um, you can also simply double click in the margin and that will toggle the breakpoint. So if I double click here, you can see I've got a breakpoint. If I have a breakpoint set and I hit the debug option, then at the point, what's gonna do is run my program and it's gonna go until the point in the execution where it gets to that breakpoint. Once it gets to the breakpoint, it'll put up this debugging perspective. So this perspective has lots of information in it. Um, if you wanna go back to the Java perspective, you can hit this button up here. That's the editing perspective. 
and here hit the bug. Now you're in the debugging perspective. Um, so what have I got here? I've got a list of all the threads that are running in my debugger. In this class, we're only going to be dealing with single threaded code. So you should only see one thing here. If, if you've got other things, that means that you've got other programs that you started debugging that you forgot to terminate. So you should only see one. Um, there's only going to be one thread ever. It should be called uh, something like main. And uh, within that, you can see the history of execution. So you can see I started my main function. It got to line 26. And at that point, it called test div 3 minus div 5. That got to line 15, at which point it called div 3 minus div 5. That got to line 6, where it hit my breakpoint. So now that we're at the breakpoint, um, we can either, but we have many options. We've, we've got these, um, the options in the debugger are listed here. So we can stop execution. We can continue, um, and that will just run until it hits the next breakpoint. Or we can step through our execution. So there's three buttons here which are important. Uh, step into, step over, and step return. And the way these differ is how they deal with function calls. In this code, I don't have any function calls. So step in and step over will behave identically. If you do have a function call, what step into will do is it will go into the function call and you can see what's happening inside of the function call, where step over will step over the function call and stay in the method that we're looking at now. So it'll just, it'll just go into the method, get the return value and come back. If you step into something that you weren't really that interested in, you can press the step return to get out of that method. So step return will simply um, take you out of a method to the caller and it'll stop whenever it gets to the calling function. But for us, um, we can just step through this and you can sort of see when I hit the step button, I move from one place to the other. Um, you can see the line number changes here. I've gone from line six to line seven. The other things here are showing you um, over here, the variables that are active in this method. So um, you can see here that A is an array. Um, if you click on it, it will use the, the, um, the printing methods to show that um, array. You can also look inside the array to see the contents. So it only has one element, which is called element zero, and its value is 15. Then I have the variable div3. Note that what we're seeing here is the execution before the current line executes. So uh, what we're seeing is div6 has executed, but div, uh, sorry, line 6 has executed, but line 7 has not. So when I take one more step, you'll see that uh, we're now at the point where we have both div3 and div5, and they're both initialized to 0. The Eclipse debugger is line oriented, and that can make code where I have many different statements on the same line difficult to debug. So if you have a for loop like this that you want to debug, what I recommend is that you split it into multiple lines um, so that you can sort of watch the execution a little bit more accurately. So I'll do the same thing for these if statements. And um, when we save the file, it's uh, important that we restart the debugger because we've edited the file and that's going to invalidate, if you like, the line numbers that we're working with in our debugging session. So we're going to stop that debugging session and start a new one. We get to line six again, and now we'll start stepping line seven, line eight. This initializes the variable i. We then test whether i is less than the length. The length of the array is one, therefore zero is less than one, and we'll continue, and we'll get into the body of the loop. So the first thing we're gonna do is to check whether a of i is divisible by three. 
And a of i, if you recall, um, is a of 0. That's 15. 15 is divisible by 3. Therefore, we expect to increment div 3. So here we're going to execute that line. And if you watch uh, over here, you'll see that the value of div 3 will uh, increment. Note also that Eclipse highlights changed values. So it's now yellow, uh, a highlighted value, because it changed on the previous line. We're now going to increment i. And you can see now i has changed. Um, oh, wait a minute. Why didn't we execute this line? Ah, at this point, maybe you can see there's the word else here. That's not what I meant. Um, this is a common mistake for beginning programmers. Uh, by putting the else there, we ensure that only one of those two will execute. Whereas here, I actually don't have mutually exclusive conditions. There is some overlap, and therefore, it's important not to use the keyword else. Ah, so at this point, I think I found my bug. So I'm going to save my file. I'm going to terminate this debugging session by hitting the terminate button. And I'm going to return to the Java perspective. You can also use Java's format uh, button to format your code. Now it's all formatted beautifully um, and we're done. So let's run our test to make sure it works. We'll run all of our tests by um, toggling the comment here. Make sure that you haven't broken anything. And we're done.